So this is an Apple CD300, which I picked up off Craigslist a few days ago. It's an early SCSI-based CD drive for the Macintosh, but the reason I got it was actually to use it on my Apple IIgs. Now I've known that the IIgs supported CD-ROMs for a while, since the drivers for it were included on 6.01, and I've always been curious about it. Now, included with this Apple CD was the SCSI cable and a Terminator, and one of these old CD caddies that look a lot like a jewel case. Now before tray loaders were common, we would use these and you just stuck the CD inside there and then you would manually insert it into the drive. So you're probably thinking, okay, well that's all well and good and thanks for the history lesson, Brian, but what does this have to do with the 2GS? Obviously there was no software made on CD for the 2GS, right? Wrong. There was actually a couple CD-ROMs specifically made for the Apple 2GS. This is one of them. It's called GEM, or Generous Efforts of Many, and that title actually explains exactly what it was. I mean, it was a collaboration from many different people who all contributed to it, and they provided different freeware, you know, sounds, games, Mac Paint graphics, NDAs, CDAs, bunch of stuff, music, all onto one CD. And at the time, that was pretty huge, because you couldn't just go online and download, you know, hundreds of megabytes worth of Protoss images, so this was the only way to have that kind of access or at least the easiest way. Now there was also some software called DiskQuest which allowed the 2GS to use PC and Macintosh CD-ROMs that used the Disk Passage engine and this was used in lots of encyclopedia style software. This is one example of that. Multimedia Audubon's Mammals and if you don't know Audubon was a 19th century ornithologist and artist and so this is a comprehensive encyclopedia on mammals. Now, amazingly enough, and much to my surprise, I actually read that you can play audio CDs in this drive with the 2GS. Now, when I read that, I immediately went to go find a CD, and I soon realized that I haven't actually played a music CD, burnt or otherwise, in close to a decade. Now, I actually tossed all my CDs a couple years ago, unfortunately, but luckily, in the midst of a bunch of trash left in my trunk, I found one CD that survived the dumps, and it's completely random and awesome at the same time, it's Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion 2. Just so awesome, because GNR just rocks. But that's enough talk. Let's boot up the 2GS and see if this thing actually works. Alright, so the very first thing that I actually tested was actually the audio CD, just because I thought that was such a neat feature. And so I stuck it in there with great anticipation, and I could actually hear the drive uh, start to read it. But then nothing came up on the screen, so I was a little disappointed by that. And so I actually went into the uh, control panel to see what was going on, because I had installed all the drivers, everything was set up. And in the control panel, if I go to the media control, I verified uh, that the media device was, you know, Apple CDSC, and then that the driver was selected, Apple SCSI CD-ROM. So everything was set up properly, and so. There's actually a couple different ways you can play the CD, a couple different programs you can use, uh, CD remote or the media controller. And so from the media controller, I selected channel 2, which was the one that I had set up for the CD. But anytime I clicked on a button, I got this I.O. error. And it doesn't matter how many times I press retry, it did not want to work. And so I actually looked up online and found out why this was the case. So the Apple CD300, which was a later model of the Apple CD, actually used the SCSI 2 interface, but the CD-ROM drivers that were released with the system disk were actually made with the Apple CD150 in mind, which was an earlier model and actually used the SCSI 1 interface. And so you have some compatibility issues, and that is the major one. The other one I noticed, and I'm not sure if this is the case with the earlier model drives as well, but I can't actually click on the eject button or even do it from the UI. It just doesn't work, so I have to continually stick a paper clip in there just to eject the disk. But hey, it works, so I'm not going to complain too much. So you probably hear me fiddling around. So I've just ejected the audio disk. Sorry, guys, I'm not going to be able to play any GNR for you today. And dang it, Civil War is on that disk too, one of my favorite songs. But well, that's okay, because I've just inserted the gem CD, so we can see if that shows up, and there you go, shows up right there on the desktop. 
and when you open it up you're basically looking at it through the HFS file system and so it's in a read-only mode but you can just copy you know some of these partitions over to your desktop and open them from there but you can actually open up these notepad documents and it passes over all the original text pretty well there is a couple of corrupted characters in there you can see I'm not totally sure what happened there it might have to do with the fact that I used a high-speed CDR to burn this disk and maybe it's picky and needs the slow speed ones I'm not totally sure but you get enough to read it alright so you can see that the Audubon Mammal CD is there and it loads and it actually shows up on the desktop that's always a good sign and all the files are in there but again this is just the HFS file system view to actually look at the content you need to use DiskQuest and so I have that software installed and ready to go and from what I've seen online uh, this software will basically allow you to look at any CD-ROMs that use the disk passage search engine and this is the only software I've tested with it and it works just fine you can see you can browse the different folders or I can actually search for specific content and I can filter by word subject title or author but let me go ahead and browse through some of these folders so let me just open up this first one in here maybe look at the introduction Audubon's Mammals introduction quadrupeds of North America exciting stuff going on here okay we didn't come here to look at text let's look at some pictures so I'm just gonna go back to that main screen and here you can look at some colored pictures or actually hear sound effects common American wildcats woodchuck Florida rat let's look at that woodchuck Wow, yeah, that's uh, that's a woodchuck. Oh, wow, you got a few of them in here. What is he doing? Looks like he just farted in his face. Guy's like, get your ass out of my face, man. And you got the big daddy woodchuck just laughing at the two. And what else we got? Carolina gray squirrel. How about the American cross fox? Let's see what that guy looks like. Oh, there we go. Yeah, when he has supper. Nice. You can actually change it from black and white to color by pressing C. But the resolution is lowered a little bit. You can see it's not as detailed. Still pretty cool you have the option. And what else we got in here? Bunch of stuff. Canada Lynx. Sure, why not? Oh, a nice pussy cat. Oh wow, that quality really went down. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna look at him in black and white. And we'll just look at one more. And what do you think? Gotta go with the Wolverine. Oh yeah, that is so awesome. Would not want to be cornered by one of those. Alright, so you get the gist of it. You can look at the different pictures. And you also have the option, uh, let me go back here, to listen to some sound samples. So, different samples from the different animals. Unfortunately, again, this is a limitation with the SCSI 2 drive. I'm not able to hear the sound. And I'm not sure if there's a driver that will allow me to do that, but I think I just have to get a, an earlier drive, you know, a SCSI 1 interface drive. But anyways, that's a look at DiskQuest and the Apple CD300. So hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.